So I messed up this video and had to record it, re-record it, because um, I drew something wrong and probably said it wrong too. I know you guys thought I was infallible. Um, it's a common misconception. Um, so I screwed up. I'm going to re-record this um, and upload it for you today. So um, we did the thyroid hormones, the classic thyroid hormones, which are T3 and T4. Oh. T3 and T4, and um, those, when people say thyroid hormones, they're generally talking about those. When they want to talk about this guy, which is calcitonin, they refer to him by name. So calcitonin does um, something entirely differently, um, entirely different than T3 and T4 do. It's controlled differently. It regulates different things. So we're going to um, do it correctly this time um, and look at its relationship to um, controlling blood plasma calcium levels. Um, and also we're going to look at it in um, comparison to its opposite hormone, which is parathyroid hormone. So you guys know where the thyroid um, is. Um, T3 and T4 are made by different cells than calcitonin is made by, but the thyroid's still in the same place. And then let's just acknowledge where the parathyroid is. Parathyroid is on the back. It's If you flip around, this is a posterior view. You're seeing um, the um, esophagus and the trachea, and the esophagus is posterior to the trachea. So it kind of wraps around those tubes, and then there's two little nipple-shaped um, pairs, two pairs on the back of the thyroid gland. Um, they used to think that the parathyroid was just a part of the thyroid, and so they would take it off accidentally when they took the thyroid off, if, for instance, you had a thyroid disorder. Okay, so I want to draw both of these correctly this time um, and tell you what they do. So... Um, calcitonin and PTH are both um, related to regulating blood plasma calci calcium levels. Um, what calcitonin does is, I always rem remember it tones down blood calcium, and you would think I would have gotten it right because I've remembered that for years. Um, so what its job is to do is to lower the blood plasma calcium levels when your blood plasma calcium is high. Like if you just ate a really calcium rich meal, you would release calcitonin and you would take calci the calcium and make sure that you removed it from the blood by putting it in places where you wanted it to be. So um, with that in mind, what do you think? Calcitonin would be released in response to low or high blood plasma calcium levels if its job is to tone down blood calcium. You release it in response to high blood plasma calcium levels. And it is a peptide and it's got humoral feedback. I'll draw it for you in just a second and you can fill in all that kind of stuff on your um, endocrine table. But let's do parathyroid at the same time and then we'll draw them both. Um, parathyroid is really the contrast or the antagonist to calcitonin. Um, and the parathyroid glands, these little guys you're looking at here, um, only release one hormone that you guys are going to learn, only one hormone that I ever learned, and that's parathyroid hormone, abbreviated PTH. And it really does the opposite. It um, basically allows you to increase your circulating blood plasma calcium levels. Um, also does something with phosphate, but we're not going to concentrate on phosphate. Um, so this hormone's action opposes the action of calcitonin from the thyroid gland. Um, and PTH would therefore be released in response to, if it's supposed to increase circulating blood plasma calcium levels, it's released in response to low blood pl plasma calcium levels. It's a peptide and it's got humoral feedback as well. The calcium is what's going to feed back. So we're gonna draw the two mechanisms for um, calcitonin and PTH, the feedback mechanisms. And this time I'm gonna to try to do it right. Um, okay, so here we go. We're going to do calcitonin first, and we'll do calcitonin in red. Okay, calcitonin's job is to tone down blood plasma calcium. So it's released in response to high calcium, and this is blood calcium, by the way. Um, high calcium is detected by the thyroid, and then the thyroid secretes calcitonin. Calcitonin's primary target is the osteoclasts 
in bone. And what it does, if you want to tone down blood calcium, what you need to do is you need to, um, so osteoclast and osteoblast activity are balanced. And as long as they are balanced, you don't see any change in bone mass or any change in blood calcium. But if I um, decreased osteoclast activity, decreased osteoclast activity, what would happen is osteoblasts would sort of pull ahead and you would have um, a net depositing of calcium into your bone, which would, if of course, in, uh, did it again, decrease your blood calcium. And what feeds back is the new level to the thyroid. Okay, so now let's draw the other one in another color. Okay, so now what does PTH do? Um, PTH is released in response to low blood calcium detected at the parathyroid. And the parathyroid um, releases PTH, which is parathyroid hormone. PTH goes to osteoclast, it also goes to the kidneys. Okay, and instead of decreasing osteoclast activity, it increases osteoclast activity. And so what that does is it ends up dumping more um, calcium into the bloodstream. And the feedback mechanism is again humoral feedback. And this says, yep, we have enough calcium and we can stop releasing parathyroid. So the other thing that this one does is um, it actually targets the kidneys as well to um, hold on to calcium at the kidney so that you do not lose as much calcium in your urine. So um, those two oppose one another. And that's what I meant to draw the first time, but apparently after you do eight video recordings a day, sometimes you make silly mistakes. So that's that.